once again, we have another Filipino Time unboxing video. I'm your host, Francis Aguila, and I'm really looking forward to this watch here. Actually, this is something I just picked up from Time Depot, so I'm looking forward to opening it up and finally getting to use it. So let's get right to it. All right, now let's uh, open this up. Since 1983, which means that I was just four years old when they started G-Shock. You out there, do the math. I'm not gonna do it for you and incriminate myself any further in terms of age. Um, open it up, the usual documentation. We're gonna skip that for now because we'll go straight to the interesting stuff. And, um, Ta-da! All right, so the usual tin case for a brand new G-Shock. I don't think it really changes much nowadays. And uh, still all wrapped up. Let's take this plastic on the side. Now, this here um, G-Shock we have here, this is called the uh, GMW B5000 1JF. Now, um, the 1JF basically means this is the steel with the resin band. And um, it's two siblings, the uh, B5000 D1, which is the all steel, including the bracelet, and the TFG9, which is the all gold with a bracelet. Uh, those are the, you know, the much more heralded and more popular models. Me personally, I really liked how this looked. And so this is the one I, I chose. Uh, for myself now this here uh, design just put that up there might look familiar to a lot of you viewers basically this is a slightly updated uh, look for what is uh, Casio's first ever G-Shock which is the DW5000 which was released in yes you guessed it 1983 uh, and well with some obvious differences now while the resin band is basically taken from the uh, DW5000. It does have the steel, um, you know, buckle and the uh, the steel uh, hardware here, and of course the steel case. The case is about 43 by 49 millimeters, which is, you know, on the big side for most watch guys. But actually, it's one of the smaller G-Shocks you can get. And I have a pretty big wrist, seven and a half, and it fits, you know. Sits just very comfortably on my wrist. Not too big, not too small, I don't think. But it definitely wears um, big compared to most watches, but wears very small compared to most G-Shocks. Now, when Casio released the G-Shock line, it basically had one goal, which was to create the most durable, most reliable watch out there in the market. Legend has it that um, the brain uh, behind the brains behind the um, G-Shock, I should say, had a mechanical watch and he had dropped it and it, you know, it uh, it failed on him and that's what led him to uh, want to create this most durable, um, more reliable watch and out comes the G-Shock, the DW5000. Like the DW5000, this has a 200 meter uh, water resistance rating, um, and like the DW5000 this should survive a 10 meter drop. Unlike the DW5000, however, which has the you know plastic and, and um, resin case, this probably won't go unscratched if I dropped it. So I'm gonna hold off on that, uh, especially since this one is uh, my own watch. Much like the DW5000 that this is based on, it has a 200 meter water resistance rating and it should survive a 10 meter drop. That being said, unlike the DW5000, which has the resin case, if I did drop this at a height of 10 meters, it probably wouldn't come out unscathed, especially since this beautiful brushed finish will probably scratch fairly easily. So in that sense, it's a very big departure from what a typical G-Shock is still. Um, if it did drop, the functions probably would survive. Like most of the G-Shocks, it has you know a bunch of basic features. So as you can see with the digital display, time, day, and date, change the functions, world time, alarm clock, stopwatch, and uh, elapsed time. Also, like all the G-Shocks, it does have a backlight feature. So you can 
push this down here and it goes on, it'll go off by itself. Um, just some differences between this and the D1 specifically, which is the all steel. One of the reasons why I really like this over the all steel one isn't really just because of the, um, the resin band, although that does help, especially in terms of weight. This is a much lighter watch. I've, ha I've had the chance to, to handle the uh, DW5000, I'm sorry, the GMW5000 D1 uh, all steel, and it's a fairly heavy watch. Uh, aside from having a, just a really big case, um, obviously the steel bracelet also adds to the heft. So this is a much easier watch to wear on a daily basis, if you ask me. But the major thing I really liked about it was that you can see this sort of quote-unquote black dial. I know it's not really a dial um, in the traditional sense, but it's kind of a black dial against you know this uh, steel uh, case. And I really liked how the contrast comes out, especially when you wear it. It just seems to have that, that pop that the D1 kind of lacked. The other thing I also like about this is that if you look at the case, it's got the brushed uh, bezel over here, but also has a polished case elsewhere. And so it gives it that, uh, that premium feel that, well, let's face it, G-Shock's not exactly known for. This definitely is not your, well, I was gonna say your father's G-Shock, that's kind of me, but it's not exactly your father's G-Shock. It's definitely something that's more of a statement piece rather than an absolute, you know, daily banger beater watch. And quite honestly, I love it for that. Uh, it doesn't pretend to be uh, something that will, you know, last, uh, you know, a big beating in the woods. But at the same time, it could. And yet, it's dressy enough so that if I wore it in jeans and whatnot, I won't look like I'm just about to tackle a tactical course. Going back to the features of this uh, G-Shock, it's got all those things I showed earlier, LED illumination, world time, timer, all that stuff. But some of the other very interesting features include um, connectivity to your mobile phone via the G-Shock app, which I'll show you guys uh, more a little bit later in this video. It also has Casio's patented tough solar, which if you look very closely around this ring here, you'll see tiny solar cells and basically what it does uh, is that instead of having a typical battery in a quartz watch that you'd replace you know, every couple of years, this actually has um, an internal battery that's recharged uh, by this tough solar, uh, solar, solar panel system here. And Casio says that even in very low light conditions, it does charge up the watch. Um, power reserves typically differ from model to model. Um, you know, with a tough solar uh, feature. For this one, I'm actually not so sure, but I'm looking forward to seeing exactly, you know, how long the charge lasts. That being said, in the event that the charge does run out, you can actually just sort of take this watch, take it out the sunlight, leave it there for a couple minutes, and you will see uh, the screen showing charge. And after a little bit, it'll start right back up uh, as if nothing ever happened. It also has Casio's multiband six, which basically means um, it would adjust to its time zone uh, from six different stations that are um, transmitting uh, the time, I suppose. But unfortunately here in the Philippines, I don't know if that feature really works. It does work in the US and Japan, of course, uh, the UK, China, and some other major countries. For here, I'm not exactly sure um, if that necessarily works. Now I want to take a little bit of time to look over this G-Shock app that we talked about a little bit earlier. And so I've actually loaded the app on my phone. Uh, this is an Android. and uh, But I haven't quite gotten around to playing around with it yet. So if I screw this up, please don't kill me. Uh, so let's see, GMWB5000, that's our watch right here. And there's some instructions. Okay, so I've got to hold down the it's this connect button that's actually the mode button here. So let's hold it down. One, two, three. And no. Oh, there we go. Watch was found. Okay. So we have to register the watch to the app. Let's do that right now. I'm actually looking forward to seeing all the different functionalities. And uh, I'm not going to go over everything. Oh. 
successful. I'm not going to go everything for this video. There's just so much to do. But uh, we'll do a couple of things here and there um, just to sort of get our feet wet. And um, right off the bat, actually, very cool thing. You can see that the uh, time is actually identical from the watch to this little screen over here. That's a pretty cool feature um, or cool detail. And it's telling us our home time is in Manila. Yes, we are in Manila. Um, and we can set different time zones. You know, I think I will set time zone to, uh, time zone two, I should say, to, uh, well, I did spend a lot of time in San Francisco, so let's do San Francisco. San Francisco. Okay, set the city to watch. Very cool. So time zone two now is San Francisco. Setting complete. Awesome. Um, and I'll probably do more cities later on, um, but at least I know it's there. Uh, another one I want to check out is, let's move over to utilities. There. So I want, as you know, as you, um, as we discussed earlier, you can actually set a lot of the, well, settings of this watch on this phone. And while it actually works the same on the phone as it does in the watch, I would imagine, you know, doing it on the phone would be a lot simpler. And so I quite like it. Uh, let's check this alarm real quick. And so now uh, the watch reads 834. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, it's a, it's just a time, 835. So I'm going to set this alarm to 835 and see if this works. So send setting to watch. Setting complete. So it's 8.34.44 now, and so in about 15 seconds, if I did this right, the watch should uh, uh, get its alarm off. And so let's see. Five, four, three, two, one, and two, two. All right, it works. Awesome. So um, turn that off. So there's a bunch of other functionalities here that um, would be really cool. I actually don't know. Let's see, one of the cool features of this watch actually is that it's supposed to have a phone finder. So actually, let's see if we can figure out the phone finder real quick. And uh, there's a guide here. Cancel connection, no, we don't want to cancel the connection. View the guide. All right, so time mode alarm. So it's got all the, um, it's like a little manual over here. So it tells you what's what. Phone finder, okay, down there, all right. And so, phone finder is hold down for five seconds. So, uh, this here set uh, button down in the lower right hand corner. So let's put this down and let's see if it works. Let's hold this down for five seconds, so. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing happened, try again. One. Oh, there you go. Finding. Oh, now it's connected. There you go. So now it's find me. Very cool. So, actually, I'm going to use that function a lot knowing me. All right. Yeah, and so there's a bunch of other features here that are really quite cool, and i definitely be spending a lot of time tonight uh, playing around with this app. Um, very, very cool. And it's something that you don't get from most other watches. So very, very interesting. Now I have a pretty big wrist. I think I'm at about seven and a half, seven, three quarter inch. So, um, this watch might look bigger on most people than it does on me, but for a G-Shock, it's actually, well, reasonably sized. Like I said earlier, 43 by 49 millimeters. It's not too heavy. You know, uh, again, owing to the resin band, which is very, very lightweight, it wears very comfortable, actually. Um, the one thing I'm not so fond of is, although it looks really cool, I know I'm going to scratch this up really, really quickly when I put the watch down on a desk, as I normally wouldn't work. Um, but other than that, I think it looks great. Um, it's not too showy. Very showy for a G-Shock, I will say. But for the most part, um, it still keeps its rugged good looks, but has that well, has that bling. And uh, while I'm not really a blingy guy, 
per se. It's a pretty cool look for a watch that isn't known for being too flashy. Well, outside of the loud colors for some of the variants anyway. And that wraps up this unboxing video for this beautiful new G-Shock. And I'm really looking forward to finally wearing it tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. And as always, please like and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Share this video if you think uh, someone would enjoy it. And as always, please take care, everyone. Good night.